So what, what school are we at here today? What, what is your name and title? And uh, what, what city is this? Yeah, now we are in Finland, in Jyväskylä, and we are in upper secondary school called Jyväskylän Lyseon Lukio. Mm -hmm. This is the oldest uh, upper secondary school in Finland. We have 1,200 students, and in this school campus also uh, works uh, vocational training mm -hmm. and uh, adult high school. So, and the 1,200 some odd students, that encompasses the vocational no, too? No, that's just, different. Just our upper secondary school. And upper secondary is for approximately, as I understand it, the 50% of students that want to go geared towards more the university yeah. track, is that right? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Yeah. And also in our school we have IB World School, which is English program, international program that, yeah. Is this an international baccalaureate? Yeah. That's yeah. what it is? Yeah, we have around 150 students doing international baccalaureate program, and yeah, a bit more than 1,000 doing normal Finnish upper secondary school. And so with this IB program, they will have like an accreditation, is that correct? Something like that? Uh, yeah. 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 Do they take different classes on the IB track? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have completely different uh, program that, that they... And this, this is an IB in English? Uh, yeah, IB is in English, okay. except Finnish lessons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just real quick, I, I, we're in the teacher's lounge and this is, you know, everything I've noticed in Finland so far is really, I don't know, it's really well thought out, like deep thought. I come from the U.S., so... I'll, I don't see a lot of deep thinking, but just in the construction, the, the openness, the, like, for example, what, what's going on here? I've, I've never seen anything like this at a school. What, that's, that seems like a Finnish thing. What's, yeah, yeah, maybe they have like coffee break or some, right. some sharing there. But it's just like a little cubicle, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, also, same thing here. Our students have, have those in, in the first hall. Really? And students love those, so they can stay there with, with their their homework and just, uh, just hang around. Wow. And in teacher lounge, so, so in, in that side and in that side, so uh, teachers have like working, like kind of open office. Right. And we have... Like few, a cubicle, like some type of modern looking cubicle there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in back, background, it's like open space, but also we have few places where you, if you want to call someone or right. you want to have like... A, individual meetings so you yeah. can use those. Yeah, I mean a lot of glass, a lot of openness here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it, you know, couches. I even seen couches in schools. Yeah. Yeah? You it's not a common thing in the US school system. Okay. It's very more very much more uh, kind of more drab. Yeah. You know, like our teachers lounge at my school is just a couple tables some chairs yeah and nobody really goes there yeah so this is a place to kind of draw people in yeah yeah and yeah. most of the teachers come here yeah yeah we have like 15 minutes breaks between the lessons because we in this city we have uh, three upper secondary schools and our students uh, have possibility to take courses from another campuses as well mm -hmm. so they have very like large scale of options they they can choose mm -hmm. So we need 15 minutes that they can walk to another campus. Sure. So yeah, during those breaks, we uh, normally teachers want to stay here if they don't ha ha have something to right. work with next lesson. And then uh, during lunch breaks... How long is lunch here? For 45 minutes. Okay, about. so in the US the breaks are quite short. Lunch is a half hour. The, the the passing breaks are only like six minutes. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't give the kids much time. So why do you, um, why do you think they, they give them longer time? Just to try to clear their minds a little bit between classes? Yeah, I think so. And, and of course, we, for, for the cooperation between different campus, so we need that time. Right. So that's, that's one reason. But I, I guess it's good it, for But it's like this everywhere. It, relax. In the primary schools and the elementary that I visited? Quite much. It, it differs quite a lot between the schools, but I guess 
yeah, no, 15 minutes is normal. Break. It's normal. Primary, primary schools, they kick uh, pupils out right. to play football too. They do? Yeah. Even if they don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. push normally, them outside. Normally in primary. So I, I found to that go. to be. Yeah. All right, so explain to me, the, the kids here are upper secondary, and so they would come starting at the age of about 15, right? Yeah, 15, 16. But any student can attend this, right? They have an option, right? Whether they want to do this or the vocational option. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they are in ninth grade, so they do joint application. Uh -huh. And then they need to pick which school they want to study. They can choose. Somebody doesn't choose. Nobody forces them here or there. They get to choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have free, free choice. They they can apply for different city or own city, different schools. So, so uh, and at the moment uh, the application period has just ended, and we got uh, a bit more than five thousand applicants here. And wow. We can pick only four hundred of them. Out of five thousand. Uh, out of five hundred. Sorry. Five hundred. Four hundred. So a hundred so didn't get. Hundred doesn't fit here they will go to another upper secondary school. So in this region, we have like a quite well uh, situation that e every student from ninth grade will have a place to study. If they want to go to upper secondary school, right. they, they have a place, but they need to pick maybe some other campus. Okay, so I, I was of the impression that, the, that you had to go within your zone to your school. Uh, pardon? I was uh, of the impression that you had to go to the zone of your school. So if you lived in this area, you had to go to this school. That fits in primary and secondary school. Oh, but wow. not upper secondary, it changes. Yeah, yeah it changes. Okay. okay. But, and you, they will find a place for you, but, uh, but it may be another school. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So you... you get what a, a few choices you put choice one choice two choice three yeah. something like that yeah five choices okay and normally uh, guidance counselors from a secondary school are like forcing them to put enough choices because they know about like their grades they right. are applying by, by their grades so uh, normally guidance counselors have quite good uh, perspectives about possibilities to get, get in. Okay. So they are guiding them very very well that they will have school. For are them. you a guidance counselor? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, so at what... Where do they actually talk to the kids and tell them about the options for vocational versus... Where is that? Seventh grade, eighth grade? Do you know where that happens? So the kids start getting pissy. In the U.S. system, they don't do this. The kids don't have options. Yeah. The difference I've found, well, there's a lot of differences in the systems between Finland and the U.S., but essentially, in the U.S., they direct and tell the student what they're going to do. The student has almost no choice in the matter, where here in Finland, the student seems to have a lot of choice. Yeah. And this cuts down on discipline problems and studying problems because the kids make that choice, whereas in the U.S. we make it for them, and a lot of times those kids don't want to do that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think guidance counseling uh, has very, like, uh, strong tra tradition here because of the, yeah, big autonomy our kids have, so they need to be guided well for to use that autonomy right. well. Do you actually and work with the parents, too? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And normally, uh, seventh grade is when they start their guidance counseling. They have lessons, they have individual meetings with guidance counselor, and they are starting like uh, find out how it is in upper secondary school, how it is in vocational training. They they visit often here, right. there, and at the campus, and see also they visit in like working places. Right. In secondary school, they have few weeks also uh, that they spend in in some working place to see right. about the professional life and when they come to upper secondary school so we we uh, guide them for for next step for the universities for the universities of applied sciences and also for vocational training some of our, our students might also continue for vocational training after this academic line right even though 
most of them are going to universities. Mm -hmm. But from the first uh, first day in upper secondary school, they will like uh, start that process about thinking what they want to do after upper secondary school. Mm -hmm. And that's my like role. That's your them. role here. Yeah. Yeah. Also, my, my role is is to guide them to make good learning path in upper secondary school because they have a lot of options to pick the courses they they want to pick. To to be a guidance counselor, did you did you have to be a teacher first? Uh, or we, normally yes. Okay. Normally yes. Uh -huh. yeah. We have one training program if you want to be guidance counselor in Finland, so you can apply straight away. But normally. 95% of guidance counselors have own teaching background. So there are teachers first, yeah. and then they have to get another certification to be a guidance counselor? Yeah. So they have to go back to the school, something like that? or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you said they own, there's only one school uh, in Finland for guidance counselors? Two universities and few universities of applied sciences where you can have that. Oh, okay, okay, I guess you. Like certificate. It's quite competitive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've heard that teachers here have a lot of freedom and trust. Would you say that's the case? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. It's built, the system's built on trust? 